Welcome into K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth. That's Derek Young. The Wildcats win a big one tonight, 45-0 over SEMO to get their season started in a, an era, and it was a question that was asked afterwards, in an era where more FCS schools are competing with FBS schools. The one thing that Chris Kleiman has done at K-State is not mess around with these guys. Maybe it's because he's come from that level. Maybe it's just because K-State can take care of business against anybody except the group of five. But it was a really good showing for K-State pretty much all around, and that's why I'll start with this, Derek. Like, Was there anybody, any position, any person that stood out to you as maybe a concern tonight that kind of surprised you? Yeah, the, the FCS success dates back to, I think, 2019 when he smoked Nichols uh, first game, and we thought maybe they don't lose a game the rest of that year just because it looked so well. So uh, concerns, I wouldn't say I have any concerns. Uh, this is about as good of a first game as you can expect. Uh, that doesn't matter if you're Alabama, you're Kansas State, or you're Wyoming, right? Uh, you go out and take care of business 45 to nothing, not a whole lot of glaring mistakes. I think you feel pretty thrilled just about in everything you can do. The only thing that I would maybe point out is it's not that they played bad. It's I wouldn't even – underwhelming is probably a little bit hyperbolic too, but probably just expecting maybe a little bit better performance from the offensive line out of the gate considering how many you know returning starts you have uh, along that group. Obviously not having Christian Duffy complicates things a little bit, uh, but yeah, just – not as smooth as you would have thought with as many returners as they have. I think the only thing that stands out to me is given the situation and how effective I think K-State's pass rush was at times at kind of forcing SEMO out of the pocket and creating some havoc there is maybe we didn't get a true look at the secondary yet. And so I'll be interested to see next week against Troy because Troy kind of had a good showing. I, I think they had it going at one point during the day and I don't, I don't, I've been so busy I haven't even seen the final score there yet. So they won, they won. If not, then maybe I'm, I'm full of it. But the other thing to, to kind of take stock of today is Will Howard. He came out, pretty much did what you wanted him to, and he threw for close to 300 yards. He threw for a couple touchdowns. The only mistake, there was some trouble there. It ultimately didn't cost K-State. Then he ran for one, and he caught one too. Yeah, I, he's probably, and it sounded like he's really kicking himself for that interception. Uh, he had his legs cut out from him as well because of the pressure that, that hit him as he was throwing that ball. Uh, I'm not sure it was the greatest idea of a throw, regardless if he gets hit or not. So that's probably it's the only one I can really think of that he'd like to have back. Obviously, he caught a touchdown as well. So he caught one, threw two, ran one, all in the first half, four touchdowns. I think almost 300 total yards in the first half. Uh, he threw for two, 296. Like I said, uh, considering – it's been, what, eight months since we've seen college football, maybe seven. I think you have to be thrilled about the way that he looked because it's only up from here. Uh, you got to about, be thrilled about the quarterbacks in general because you had Avery Johnson come in and showed that he could be a spark if they ever need it. Um, God willing, they don't. But if they, but if they ever do, obviously he's uh, up to the task. So just uh, I just felt like everything was easy and they took care of business like the mature team that they are. All right, well, you, you jumped to it, so let's talk Avery Johnson real quick as they're turning more and more lights off on us here. Yeah, we're looking uh, dark. yeah we are looking dark. This will, next week, 11 a.m. game, we won't have to worry about where we find the lighting at. Avery Johnson was the second quarterback in the game. The only other quarterback into the game came in and – didn't look like there were any nerves because he immediately hit a pretty big pass. He was able to take K-State down the field, and he ended up running in for his first touchdown. Almost had a second one, but stepped out of bounds. What did you make of Avery Johnson's play? And then also the fact that he was the second and only other quarterback to get into the game tonight. Yeah, I'll start with this performance. Uh, he cut it loose a few times through the air, uh, and they were really good throws. The one to Trey Spivey, you know, really uncorked that one. I, I think there was one, uh, you know, n near the north end zone as well. Uh, that he threw on the run. I don't know if that was maybe Jace Brown on the receiving end of that. I, I can't really remember. So a few good throws, dynamic with his legs. I think we all knew that, uh, but seeing it live and in person, I mean, we saw it in high school as well, obviously. But when you see it in, on a college football stage, like in Bill Snyder Family Stadium, like tonight, it just, words don't do it justice. Like you could hear it all throughout training camp. Like this guy, he's you know, he's almost scoring a touchdown every time he touches the ball or takes off with the ball anyway outside the pocket. And it's true. I mean, you guys saw that tonight. He's elusive. He's just a weapon in the open field. Now, we'll see what happens when he's facing better teams and maybe a little bit better athletes, guys that hit a little bit harder. And if it looks as easy as it did tonight, it probably won't. But I'll be curious to see it. But this he's got a you know world of 
ahead of him when it comes to his future. Uh, in terms of not seeing a third quarterback, interesting, very interesting, because they said they would like to play three quarterbacks. Certainly had the opportunity to do so. Instead, Avery gets three possessions. We don't see Jake Rubley at all. Um, perhaps not an indictment on Jake Rubley. Avery Johnson's just that good, and you know Chris Klein even said kind of just wanted to see Avery Johnson. And I think you got to cut a guy loose when you're like. I mean, I think we have something special here. We can't just give them one possession. We can't just give them two possession or, or five plays. I think they wanted to see some extended action, and that's how that kind of unfolded and, and came to fruition. I will, I will also say just like the comments after the game, because we just got out of the press conferences as well. When you, I mean, Chris Kleiman is, I mean, they're not afraid to talk about it. Like, uh, I think it was like five or six questions in, someone finally asked about the whole Avery Johnson thing, and Chris Clement joked, he's like, I'm surprised it took you guys this long. Um, but, man, he's not afraid to gush about him. Um, Will Howard's not afraid to gush about him. Will Howard said, as long as Avery Johnson's at Kansas State, the, the future of this program is in great hands. So when you have the team starting quarterback glowing about him, you have the head coach who's not afraid to heap praise on him and what the effects might be. You probably know you have a mature kid that can handle it. You have another mature kid that can handle it in Will Howard, and you know that you have something special down the road. Absolutely. Two other things to hit on before we get out of here. Number one, I think the receivers were a pretty good positive tonight, and that's even with Keegan Johnson not playing. Chris Kleiman said that he got nicked up in practice. It's a little thing. He wasn't too concerned about it, but K-State was without their top receiver on the depth chart, and immediately Will Howard came in. He threw a touchdown pass to Jaden Jackson, which caught my eye. R.J. Garcia had a pretty productive night. What did you make of K-State's receiving core? Yeah, they impressed me. I think uh, you obviously want to see a larger sampler, sample size and see how this thing can go. You'd like to see him at full strength as well because Keegan Johnson's the best of the bunch. Uh, hopefully it is as you know precautionary and, and short term as they say. It sounds like he'll play next week. Sounds like maybe if it was like today was the Big 12 championship game, maybe he's on the field as well. I don't think they wanted to push it because the, you know maybe if the caliber opponent played a little bit of a role and it's something to flare it up and maybe you don't want to push it and you know maybe some of the issues crop up like they did at Iowa, right, when he missed extended time. I, I think that's what they're trying to avoid in this situation. But the receivers were impressive. I mean, Jaden Jackson, a little quiet after the touchdown, but still has a, gr- has a good catch. That was another great ball by Will Howard. I'll count Ben Sinnott in this group. I mean, he caught five balls. I think they were all in the first half. Yeah, not six. <laughs> no, we needed six. Uh, but uh, all five, all five in the first half, 100 yards. Uh, a, a very fortuitous fumble as well, so he can even fumble yep. the right way. Yep. So that, that's a skill. No. Um, and then I thought R.J. Garcia, I mean, you have to pick Will Howard as your MVP. I understand our guy, our guy Drew did. I mean, you know, over 300 total yards, I think, four total touchdowns, mm-hmm. caught a touchdown, ran a touchdown, threw it multiple touchdowns. You had to go Will Howard. If you didn't, I think you go R.J. Garcia. Um he was fantastic, well over 100 yards, really explosive, a lot of chunk plays. Uh, appears to have excellent hands. There were some balls he just snatched out of the air. I didn't think he had that in him. So R.J. Garcia blew me away in that regard, and I thought he was out, uh, probably the best skill position player on the night, although D.J. Giddens was also tremendous. Uh, but we shouldn't get out here without talking about the defense. They just pitched a shutout, right? Uh, give up, I think, two rushing yards all night. May, may, uh, that might be more. It yeah. might be too many. It might be one. Uh, either way, they were they were dominant. Uh, the secondary put the clamps on as as well as you would like to see from a group that's breaking in a lot of new starters. Austin Moore was tremendous. He was Drew's defensive player of the game. I thought that was deserving as well. Um, you had some really young guys come in and, and do some really nice things as well. I thought, really, you could pick out a lot of good things about the defense. They did just pitch a shutout. They got a, they got a turnover as well. I thought the most impressive position group was actually the nose guards. I thought all three of Uso Sayamalo, who didn't start because he's come back from injury, uh, Javon Banks was really quick. Uso was you know disruptive, a lot of penetration, and then uh, Damian Ela Leo had a sack. He was really active in the first half. I think there was a lot of consternation in the off season in the last several weeks about what they did or didn't do at the nose guard position, thinking maybe they needed to go out and get more um, because of Uso's health status and just not knowing what they had in Eli, Leo, or Banks. I thought that was the best position group on the defensive side of the ball tonight. Yeah, and, I mean, I, somebody that called Damian Eli Leo games at Manhattan High, that's what he looked like at Manhattan High, and so it's impressive that he's able to do it on this field behind us right here. All right, let's end it real quick. I'll give you your victory lap. 
you talked up Chris Tennant this week. He came through. He was perfect for K-State tonight, hit a 51-yarder, tied his career long that he had in 2021 at Texas. Uh, maybe the confidence is back for Chris Tennant, and that's a really good thing for K-State, makes him a more complete team. Yeah, that's what head coach Chris Clement said earlier in the week. Is like He's got a different mantra, you know, aura about him that he thinks is what could propel him forward and kind of unlock all that talent. I mean, he's one of the most talented kickers to ever come through Kansas State. He kicked that 51-yarder, and it, and it was light work for him, right? He kicked a – he had the opening kickoff almost ended up in the crowd. So, I mean, this is an unheard of leg. Uh, he just needs to believe he's as, as good as he actually is. Once that happens, uh, the sky's the limit. Hopefully tonight's, uh, you know, the starting point for that. I will say uh, small sample size, more to prove, because if, if I remember correctly uh, – the, the lengthier kicks haven't been the issue. It's kind of those mid, medium-sized kicks, and, and we'll see what happens when he's confronted with those in the future. Yep, it'll be interesting to watch, but the Cats start the season 1-0 and with a 45 nothing win over SEMO. That'll do it for us here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Make sure you're signed up, taking in all the action over at K-State Online on On3. That's Derek Young. I'm Mason Voth, and uh, we'll see you next week here in Manhattan.